Well, I found a break in the weather, so I'm booked to hunt the forest tomorrow. But um, you're allowed to be in there the day before and after, not hunting, but just be in the forest. Yeah, so I, I always get that little dodgy feeling about turning up first thing in that morning. I'd rather be within a K of where I want to hunt, um, but be turning up without, you know, engines going, slamming doors, getting camps and stuff set up. I'll just roll my swag up on the back tray tonight. But anyway, it's my first time hunting this area. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm confident that there'll be deer around, but um, as to whether they're pretty educated or not is a whole different guess, so can't let the guard down. And um, wind will be the biggest factor. I mean, tomorrow's supposed to be a fine day, but they said that about today as well, so um, we'll just roll with it. One thing that is guaranteed is gonna be very strong, west southwesterly winds um, which is good because at least you know that that's kind of guaranteed and I know where certain thermals might be coming from so I've got a pretty good map in my head about how I want to approach the situation bloody windy all right well there's that system smashing across the hills there for a lot of critters it's going to be a pretty rough night I mean, not for me though, I and mean, the wind bothers me. I don't know if it's just me, but I seem to get a lot of buddy windy days in the bush. Um, but no, I mean, in the swag, in the back tray, I'll be just toasty and fine. Um, but thinking about the critters though, I, they hate to be in this, especially at night time when they're cold, there'll be a bit of rain, or dotty rain that comes with it, but they'll just be frustrated being in the wind, they won't want it. And in some of these harvest zones, um, where I was keen to hunt, I think they'd be pretty exposed and uncomfortable overnight. So, it, this is a concept that Errol Mason um, put out there a lot about Samba, um, which I think though still applies to a lot of species, is that whole zone of silence concept where they find little pockets where um, they're out of that wind, they're out of direct cold weather, they might have a little bit of sun, um, they'll just be comfortable. But also, it's, you know, it's about them being comfortable out of bad weather them also being able to hear and feeling secure that way um, I think it's the same for most critters so if there's any spots on the hills which are just out of the wind but maybe get that first hit of sun in the morning yeah, you know, it was getting a bit cold there so I thought fucking just smash a miso and get comfy just get out of this wind See what the last half an hour of my presents. Maybe not. Well, we actually had a pretty reasonable night's sleep in the back, but as soon as I opened the back tray, oh, that cold wind is just blight. It's exactly the same as it was when I went to bed. Same weather system pushing through light rain, very cold, so I've just come in to try and warm myself up. Still around though. Sun's out finally. I'm hoping to get the eyes on these deer.
place. I can just smell them the whole time. Just doing a tight rush. Well, that's a really nice size sow and after I shot her looked over the corner boom got another one that's gone down the hill a little bit um, but I can still hear pigs that way um, there's just pigs on pig shit pig rubbins everywhere here it's a nest um, I should probably think about putting a bullet in another one to be honest so we'll talk later now these ain't no deer rubs there's the pigs. Look at that. A little bit of tusks happening when they need it. That's what I mean by nest. All that lamandra pushed over. Oh, it just smells a pig. Well, I've brought both the pigs to this halfway mark here. That's because all this really mossy ground and it's got clover there. It's um, a nice clean place to, to cut them up because I'm, I'm going to take their legs. Maybe some backstrap if it's not too damaged, but um, yeah, you know, always careful with peas. These are really fat pigs. Um, first inspection, not a single sign of a tick on them. I don't know, the area's been very lush and green of late, which suggests to me that they're eating a lot of pasture. Good to be on the board. There, there's another one I shot and it, it went down into the creek. Um, and the blackberries were immense, so I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna waste my time, but um, yeah. Oh, what a beautiful day. It was just so funny to see, because I saw that there were deer right out in the private, nowhere near forestry, unfortunately. Um, two bucks, and both of them seemed to have lost an antler. So, early August, or oh, getting towards mid August, they're already casting off. It's been really out of whack. You know, I, last November, out near Blaney, I saw two fallow bucks in November, both in hard antler, both still got their antler. And that was, that was the last year's antlers. I think it's the drought. A lot of natural rhythms getting messed up. Anyway, I'm stoked. Some good hunting. It was funny, that I'd recently missed an opportunity on a big mob of pigs. A different forest, and I'm kind of kicking myself a bit about it. I didn't come here to hunt pigs, though. I came here to hunt deer. And it's cool seeing those ones way out at the private. It was funny. So I was, you know, crashed here in the swag overnight for, you know, first thing in the morning hunt. It turned out to be horrible weather. From like a brief half an hour, go out and look. Came back for a coffee pretty quickly and sulked in the car a bit till about nine o'clock. And even then, the weather was pretty average. About ten thirty, that's when there was a, an easing in the wind and finally some sun coming through. And so 10.30 in the day to see deer out feeding? What does that tell you? That coming close to about 11.30, here I am on Porkers. A lot of them pretty active, feeding, mooching around. What we learn from this, as soon as they've got a break in the weather, they, they want to get active. They've been frustrated as anything. They've been cold, they've been miserable. That's why I went and sulked in the car and had a coffee. They didn't have this luxury. But you can see where they've been bedding. You can see parts of the hill they've been choosing to bet on, which are just out of the, the west southwesterly winds that were blasting over there, um, of course they were going to get up. So the point is, if you come out and there's, there's been some average weather but you're expecting good weather, try to be in the zone for that change, because they'll react almost instantaneously for it. But um, once I've knocked a bit of meat off these two, I'm going to hang it in a tree, I'm going to go to some country just over that way, just about a kilometre that way, uh, just because I want to see it and understand it whilst I'm down here then I'll get their legs back up into the esky in the car and oh what was the mat here I mean the, the weather's good it won't be for the rest of the week I'll probably go to the other side of the forest and still have another crack of deer because um yeah why not make hay when the sun shines get it whilst you can anyway it's been a good time
trying to put flesh side to flesh side like that but um I'll be skinning them up at home anyway so do them this way hang them up in a tree and I'll come back from so I want to see what's over in that garden oh. see their handiwork no good Yeah, three o'clock. Just under three hours of light left. I'm still going to take an hour to chill. I just want to cruise just a patch that I didn't have a chance to see before. And yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for deer. I'm hoping for some fallow. But the very worst, you know, I might just hang out in a nice spot and if I can't get them there, I'll just have a look at the surrounding countryside and see if I can film a few right on dark. That'd be fun. It's kind of... I always use this period of time, like August, September, just really try and make sure I've gotten Victorian trips. Um, poor me. I, I, I feel for Victorians right now, not, not myself. Um, but yeah, I was kind of counting on a sand behind for that, but it's fine. It's much better to, to hunt around home. Um, and damn, we've got some good hunting around here. I love central western New South Wales. It's just got such a mixed bag. Doesn't mean it's always the easiest hunting, but damn, it's there for you if you want to work for it. Love it out here. I think effectively, I've only got about an hour left, so I've come up to a bit of this rugged country here. Hey, what do you know? I probably want to be in a green paddock too. Yeah, I think you're a spider. Up you get, mate. Well, it's hard sleeping all day, isn't it? Mm. No does around to do that for you, eh, mate? Oh well. Each to their own. What a crack of days hunting. I've really enjoyed myself. And um, I'd love to be doing a lot more this week, but we're gonna be rained out. That wild pork's gonna be really interesting. I'm gonna cook that up tomorrow. That'll be sick. Very low on battery, so I'll, I'll sign out pretty shortly, but um, I'll probably just use the remainder to keep filming these, this little bachelor mob just there on the on the fringe country. It's cool to see them. It's always nice when like, so you know, I'm, I'm not the best at glassing. Funny eyes I've got on me, but um, it's just nice to, been 30 seconds moving through and then like oh what do you fucking know anyway I'm gonna do that now eight times I'm not sure about going to work today. Bloody brilliant. Well, what, what a day to introduce you to the new home for me. Far out, look at that come down. Yes. So good. Oh man. Very pleased to be having the chance to live off grid at the moment. Um, I didn't build this or anything, but I've had a chance to rent a fantastic little cabin in the mountains. And this is what happens when you live in the mountains. Well, 
been looking forward to smoking up one of these wild pig legs that I got the other day. And um, I've had it in a brine overnight. The measures I got were one cup to one gallon, that's salt to water, and half a cup of sugar to that same gallon. Um, I'll put the metrics down below there, um, save so doing the maths and all that, but I've also added chopped up onion in there, it's garlic, and yeah, it's been soaking in all that flavour. I found this was really important to do just because I know a lean game like wild pork could dry up very easily in the smoker, and I'm going to give it at least four hours, recheck on it then, um, an internal thermometer, and give it a little bit more after that, um, just to make sure it's properly cooked through, but also that, yeah, I mean, I want this to be like a pulled pork thing if I can. Anyway, I'm going to give it a nice spice rub now. Beautiful. And I like Cajun. Ah, oh, it's a wind. Very clean hands, of course, before you go rubbing raw meat. Well, I should say cured meat, because it has been brining for quite some time. Bloody ripper. So I'm going to put this up here in the stainless steel rack. Um, this will be... So this will be turned at some stage. Um, I'll give it an hour or so first. Probably two hours first, and I'll flip it another two hours. Then I'll check the internal temperatures, and then I'll finish it off as best I can. Um, I've got some hickory wood down the bottom, um, and that'll have to be topped up too. And I'm also going to have a basin of water, which I'll have to fill up. Um, and that's just to make sure that the humidity stays in here, keeps everything nice and moist. Beautiful. Now I'm just letting the initial temperature get up to about um, 120. I don't really want it to get too much higher than 120, 130. Um, but just getting the smoke started initially, I'll turn it right down, see where that temperature stabilizes, and then I'll um, I'll give it some time. The old flipper oh, Yes. She's a winner. I'm give her a bit more. When I say a bit more, I think another hour and a half at least. And I'm going to check the internal temperature of the middle. Um, first things first, I've got to top up and get some more hickory in there. Jesus smells good. I just take a temperature test of the middle, aiming for something between 80 and 90 degrees. It's um, 75, getting close to 80. And I'm just really mindful of not wanting to dry this out. Um, Almost five hours in the smoker. She's juicy, just not at that pull apart level just yet. So I'm gonna be careful to carve a bit off. Looking pretty primo in the middle. Well, not the middle, underneath the surface, but that's good. Now, that's steaming there. That lovely top surface. Well, to give her a crack. Yes! <laughs> Shut up. Oh, that's so good. Alarms. It's funny, just on the outside, the actual surface it's got a it's got a chew to it, like it's um crispy's not the word. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a tight layer of chewiness on the top, which is full of flavour, and then unbelievably tender underneath. Seriously tender. Just one thing that seemed really fitting was to um collect a bit of watercress to add to the whole thing. Just like that old book by Barry Crump from New Zealand. A little bit of watercress. A bit of slaw on top. See, I'm not a chef, but well, I'm about to enjoy a wonderful sandwich.